So uh, what I want to discuss here uh, is a problem that I've been faced with numerous times. Uh, like, I'm a chaos physicist by background, and I work as a virtual world designer, mostly on online games. And I really have a tough time explaining to people what I do, especially my mother. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm faced with a steep task, because like, online games have a certain stigma associated with them. Uh, they have like juvenile themes of violence and uh, blood and gore. And there's really not much constructive you can say about them, usually. Or at least that's how people feel. And uh, this is also reflected on the players or the people that use those things. Is that... Uh, <laughs> there's like a... Escapism, fleeing responsibility and such. So uh, I'm sometimes thinking like, I'm a terrible, terrible man in a terrible industry doing terrible things to people. And, uh, but I don't really feel like that, so I want to explain a little bit to you how I feel with what I'm doing. So on the subject of reality, uh, there's something that, uh, if you think about what anchors us in, uh, in reality, of course we have the, the primal needs of uh, food and shelter and uh, sex. These are all things that uh, we share with all other animals, and uh, these are very real things. But uh, for humans, uh, there are certain other aspects which are important as well. And uh, communication is one of them. The ability to talk to each other, to share information, is uh, essential for us humans as social beings. It is what creates memory and culture. And uh, there is also the notion of doing things together and uh, having people form groups and share something that they build, uh, have like... Uh, attachment to what they did, share some love about it. These are very uh, important things for human reality. And uh, when you think about how those things are affected by technology, that is where some magic happens. And uh, there it's always important to remember that we don't see with our eyes, but we see with our brains. And uh, our social brain is really ready to accept uh, all kinds of stuff regarding social interaction, even though it might not be the natural thing. So when you think about how uh, communication is uh, like transported across vast distances through phones, for example, or now through internet, we adapt very rapidly to that. We don't need a genetic modification of our body to be able to have the suspension of disbelief that I'm talking to somebody that is 5,000 kilometers away from me, that poses absolutely no problem to my sense of reality in that social interaction. And that is a very important thing. It means that our notion of reality is not bound to these physical constraints that we are used to for our primary needs, but for social interactions, they can be stretched quite a bit. And the same goes with the things that you build together. It is very easy for people to uh, have uh, the notion that something that you build virtually is as real as a real thing. So you can very easily transpose your feelings of ownership, of attachment to a virtual thing. And uh, you don't need to go through mental exercise to do that. And uh, basically, why, what I look at when we're looking at uh, doing virtual worlds is basically being able to harness these uh, patterns of uh, communication and emotions and uh, using technology to uh, create, sort, sort of like channel all these patterns into something meaningful and then let these people build something together that they share emotions about, that they care about. And uh, doing this on a planetary scale is absolutely incredible to think about that we're able to do this today. And uh, the important thing here to note is that for the people participating in this, this reality is as real as for any other, because it's a social reality. And uh, you can think of Facebook as such a virtual world. Many people don't realize that Facebook is a virtual world. 
It provides you with a mean of communication, but also through liking, poking, uh, sharing, you're creating shared assets that other people can look at, creating something that uh, is even a game. How many likes do I get my, for my profile picture? Um, so all of this is like a virtual world, and it's quite meaningful for people. They, uh, you can, I can just imagine uh, all the grandmothers that can now follow uh, all their children where they're like traveling abroad somewhere, and raising kids, all of that. The level of engagement they have with the family is actually much higher than before. So it is very meaningful and very important. And uh, this is a little bit uh, the analogy that I would like to use when I think of a virtual world design. It's basically, uh, it's a little bit like creating the ocean, making sure that the temperature is so just right, maybe a little decoration here and there. And then we have fishes that swim in this. And fishes will swim according to the patterns that they like. They will create the social swirls of groups and uh, emotions that uh, people do naturally when they are given the tools to do so. And uh, we are a little bit like the janitors that make sure that the fish tank is okay. And uh, I don't think that's such a bad thing to do in a way. And uh, I'd like also to, maybe in the end to share with you a, a personal story. Uh, something like 40 years ago, uh, I moved to Iceland. I was actually born in France, and I was six or seven years old at the time. And uh, I remember, like, uh, I didn't speak the language, uh, and I remember that uh, I had an old long-wave radio at home that I just put above my bed. And long-wave radios are a finicky thing. You, they only work in certain weather conditions, like actually when it was a little bit stormy and only during the night. And so when I went to sleep as a little boy, switched off the light, started like tuning around through the hiss, and sometimes I could just reach a French radio station. And uh, during the night in that radio station, uh, they were, had actually a talk show that was a uh, psychologist that took phone calls from people. <laughs> Usually very depressed people and probably not the right thing for a young kid to be listening on. <laughs> but uh, I remember how I felt good about, like, alone in the dark with a little stormy weather outside, just tuning it just right, and I hear these familiar voices and familiar languages, people sharing emotion, crying, laughing, etc. And this made me happy to, to have this, the little thing. And uh, if I can, in the virtual worlds that I participate in making, if I can somehow make somebody happy in that way, then I'm happy with what I do. So thank you.